Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is a overlay of the price of Priceline.com, my favorite short, and silver, my favorite long. So I couldn't resist the temptation last week. I went ahead and bought a put on Priceline again, trying to pick a top in my Play Money stock account. We'll see if I was right. But you can see here from this chart, just how extreme the difference is between this one just one speculative paper vehicle that we have here which is up 5500 percent since 2003 you can see silver is up about 200 300 percent over the same period of time clearly one is a bubble clearly the other is not now if you remember they were telling us silver was a bubble here you can see that silver never approached anything like the parabolic spike that we're looking at in Priceline but again Priceline is where they want you to put your money because they can very very quickly take it away whereas silver is where they do not want you to put any money so silver is back down to you can see here this line back down to where it was trading at the top when Bear Stearns collapsed. A phenomenal deal to be able to pick up silver for about 22 bucks. So we're going to look at uh, what's available. But before we do that, let's think about this market cap here. Now this market cap on Priceline is around, the last time I checked, I think it was $67 billion dollars. So $67 billion is going to buy, what, about 3 billion ounces of silver? That's the market cap of just one company. 3 billion ounces of silver is a four-year total mining supply. So that's kind of crazy. Now, this chart here is the monthly nearby Euro dollars contract. I pulled this up because they don't have the T-bill contract anymore but for all intents and purposes they trade in lockstep unless there's a major crisis and the TED spread widens but the TED spread pretty much doesn't function anymore as you can see a lot of these things don't function anymore the short-term Treasury rates basically from about we're looking at 2009 are broken you can see they're flatlined at here it is 99 point seven six five so we're stuck at an interest rate of about point oh three for the last five years now that that means the economy is broken that means that the central planners have been pushed into a corner we know that with QE they had to go above the line and and actually print money but as far as interest rates they can't really have negative interest rates so that's about as low as they can go on the short end they've completely broken things and they can't recover so we're now just sitting and waiting for the reset now I want to cover a thread that's on the silver forum on the public blog and this is started by dreamer about whether or not the subscription service is worth the value but I want to address this statement from Boy from Dixie and and then my response to it here this is the statement from Boy from Dixie let's see I got in when silver was around thirty five dollars an ounce and it already fell back from fifty dollars an ounce to thirty five and all the silver gurus were shouting bye 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 to the top of their voice and they bring out their charts and graphs and say see here when it crosses this line and it turns this curve makes an X right here at this point she will blast off to the moon but silver continued to backslide down below $30 an ounce and did that deter the four seers? No, they only proclaim that it is much better bargain at these prices. Lol, and say that all we need is for the moon to align with the stars and silver will blast off then. But did it blast off? No, it continued to slide down on below $25 an ounce and then on down to 20 and below and they're still saying that this is a very good deal on this coin. LMAO, I could have bought grits and made more money instead of paying someone for that kind of advice. I would think a class action lawsuit would be a better idea. Now that 
brought about a lot of responses, but I wanted to cover my response to that because I actually went back into my own account and you can see here are the orders that were shipped. Now I listed a purchase that I made in 2009 and when we go and see the koalas when we're looking at those later I'll show you the one that I bought in the fall of 2008 but this purchase here was after that pretty much I went for a year at that after 2008 bottom and didn't buy anything then I made one purchase in 2009 made one more in 2010 and you can see that that was this year of the tiger half ounce coin and I paid twelve dollars and fifty uh, fifty six cents for a half ounce coin at that time now as I point out below at that time silver had actually dipped below fifteen dollars so I was paying twenty four uh, twenty five dollars an ounce when silver was fifteen dollars an ounce for those 2010 year of the tiger half ounce coins of course I wish I would have bought thousands of them because they're so rare that no one has them at all but the other coin that I bought and this is during 2011 so you'll note that the run-up in silver if you remember in December of 2010 it was still around 20 bucks and then through the early part of 2011 to May that's when it made the run to 50 I didn't recommend any particular coins I, I don't give investment advice but I tell you what I'm doing I didn't do anything between December and that run up in May then I did end up making a purchase in September 2011 when the price dipped below 26 very very briefly and that's when I bought these 2011 one ounce Somali African elephants and this is this price here 3274 that's the highest price I've ever paid for silver so I didn't buy silver above 40 I didn't buy it above 35 but I sat back and watched now I would suggest that we would probably want to do the same thing when we get a run like that again I think we're going to get a run like that a lot of other people have suggested that people should dollar cost average you can dollar cost average I don't see anything wrong with that it's a little bit difficult because you have to pay shipping charges all the time and you can't really buy in bulk what you want I prefer to buy in bulk the coins that I've had my eye on for a while when the price is in a drastic decline that's just the way I prefer to buy so hopefully that clears that up now this is the Somali elephant now this doesn't mean because it's on eBay that you can sell one coin for exactly what you see here or that you can sell a large number for that it just gives you an idea of what people are paying so you can see here uh, someone got this coin for 3185 that's the coin I have I'm very pleased with the coin I still like the coin and I think the coin is going to succeed in the future I think it's going to be a popular coin and we'll look at that when we look at the elephant series so this is my worst investment in the silver the physical silver and I'm still quite happy with it so let's go over and look at what's available right now that's going to be the main thing because still with silver at where are we at right now I think we're at about twenty two dollars twenty one dollars and forty four cents you can see it's still an incredible bargain right now on silver so let's go over and look and see what's available and do some picks and pans of what I like now I'm gonna skip the eagle and the maple just because for me they're pretty boring same coin every year so the first one I'm gonna look at here is going to be the Canadian wildlife series and that's one I like to keep an eye on we'll go ahead and set it the default being prices low to high and I like to keep an eye on it because they've performed fairly decently as numismatic premium plays semi numis but they haven't they haven't outperformed the Perth products but I like to keep an eye on them so you can see a lot of these are abrasions or spotted that seems to be a problem with the 
Canadian Mint. And we have the first one here is going to be the pronghorn antelope. Don't really like the coin. And here's the grizzly. But unfortunately, that's abrasions and spotted, so we're not going to look at that. There's the wood bison, about 27 bucks. The moose, about 29 bucks. So it seems to be building a slight premium here. That's from 2012. The cougar series, also building a slight premium. And here's a, abrasions on the 2011 wolf series. And that's the, the most successful of theirs. And then here's the grizzly series. Now, that's a little high, maybe, but I do like the coin. I think that this is going to be second behind the wolf. So I would be slightly tempted to pick up a few of these for... 3250 that's a little expensive but still I think that's probably a good buy for that coin I think it's going to be a popular coin and other than that we really don't have anything but we have the polar bear I've covered that before it doesn't seem to really be building in any kind of premium of course it's 2013 so it's uh, still around the newer one of that series is the arctic fox and you can see that one's about 50 bucks so I don't really see anything that stands out for me. Probably my favorite on this list is going to be the 2011 Grizzly for about $32.50. Let's get back to the list. I want to go and look at the, the Elephant series. And one thing you're going to notice when you look at the Elephant Series here, I'm doing these low to high. Here's the 2014 Elephant Series. You can get those for $24.48. That seems to be a pretty good buy. They have quite a few of them. And you can get the 2013. You can see that for about $28. Bucks. Then once you get past those two, there really aren't many of the older ones available. 2009 not available 2012 out of stock so you can look around and check some of the others usually I only find these in decent quantities on Atmex so yeah it just appears that this coin for whatever reason once they sell out there just aren't any available it I don't think that Atmex buys them back but that's a somewhat bullish sort of thing for this coin. But again, that's hard to get a gauge on it. So let's jump over to my favorite, of course, of all time. is going to be the Lunar Series 2 from Perth Mint. And that's the one that I watched the closest. That's the one that has had the series that's had the most successful number of semi-numismatic coins come out. And at the bottom or at the top we've got 2014 half ounce for $14.50. So you're paying an effective price of about $29 an ounce for silver. Pretty steep premium but then again this is an amazing coin. Simply amazing coin. I bought, I think I bought a roll of the one ounce when they first came out for about 37 bucks. We'll see here, they're, they're over 50 now. So that seems like a really good deal. The other deal, and you can see the other half ounce and one ounce, there's not a lot available. The other really good deal is going to be the two ounce. I've covered this before. You can see right here is the one ounce of this horse series for $51.49. So they bumped that premium up. You can see there's 25 reviews, at five stars. But right here after it, you've got the two ounce for $53.49. So that's coming in at about $26.50 an ounce. That, in my mind, is an incredible deal. I have 469 of those left. So that's definitely going to be my top pick. And then a fairly far back second is going to be this half ounce. So let's jump over and look at the Koala series. 
I haven't picked up koalas really for some time because, in my opinion, the koala series has kind of gone away from the artistic style that I like. So I really haven't followed that series. Now here's the 10th ounce. That's just crazy. You're paying an effective $100 an ounce. Here's the half ounce of the 2014. You can see that's a, a good buy for half ounces. That's a 14 bucks, $28 an ounce. Here's last year's half ounce, and you can see no premium there. So how many do they have? No premium over this year's, I should say. And they've got about 900 of them. So it doesn't really seem to be building that much of a premium. Here's a little bit higher for the 2012, but not that much higher. So it looks like my instincts may have been correct that the, the Koala series is kind of petering out. Here's a 2013 one ounce for $25. So that would probably have to be my favorite of these. But then again, I'm not too keen on the Koala series anymore. Now, I mentioned that I had purchased the 2009 Koala series in the fall of 2008. This is what was available when silver was $8.50 an ounce. So I think I paid $14 for mine. You can see they're $61 now. So silver was about a third of where it is now and these have returned about fourfold. So still a good deal and uh, people are going to say, well, you can't sell them for that. Well, people are buying them for that and uh, I don't intend to sell them. And that's going to be really the main issue when you're talking about this topic being brought up about people stuck at a loss. If you look at the last sentence of, or one of the sentences he said here, he said, I could have made more money by buying grits. So, this is obviously a person who's looking at silver as an investment that you can flip. Now, if you're talking about flip, flipping an investment, obviously you're not going to be talking about physical silver because as I said, the problems with dollar cost averaging, the shipping costs, the, the premium costs and all of the stuff, the logistics of it, Obviously, if you're interested in flipping investments to make a profit, you're not going to be interested in buying and selling physical silver unless you're a bullion dealer. But that's just not going to be something that's going to be profitable because there's just too many costs in that. This is for investors. This is for people who are interested in protecting their wealth and buying something that's going to hold its value over the long term as this thing plays itself out as this ultimate bankruptcy of the United States government plays itself out people are trying to find the best investment they can use to protect themselves to get through the crisis and it's still my opinion that's physical silver and we'll talk to you next time